Epic exploration journeys were made in the 1970s and 1980s gathering data to select coastal lands for new refuges created under the 1980 Alaska Lands Act. In 1977, Edgar Bailey and I, Nina Faust, flew to Sandpoint, Alaska for a three-week reconnaissance of marine birds and mammals on many of the smaller Shumigan Islands, covering approximately 200 nautical miles by 16-foot Avon inflatable boat. Then, only Simeonoff Island was part of the National Wildlife Refuge System, included in 1958. Shumigan Island weather is much like the Aleutians and the south side of the Alaska Peninsula. Frequent clouds, wind, and precipitation. The mean July temperature is 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of the blocking effect of the mountains on the Alaska Peninsula, the Shumigans get more sunny days than the notorious foggy Aleutians. On July 2nd, we left Popoff Island at 4.30 p.m. and boated three hours to Coravan Island's east side. Eight agitated black oyster catchers on the beach and a rough-legged hawk in its nest eyed us warily as we set up camp. From Coravan Island, we could see the steep sea cliffs and high backbone ridge of 459-acre Carpa Island. On July 4th, with glassy calm seas, we boated to rugged Carpa Island where vast rafts of common murs, over 100,000 pairs, loafed offshore of Carpa Island, the largest muir colony in the Shumigans. A tiny, rough, rocky beach, so steep we slid into the tent's side at night, served as our base of exploration. On top of 1,300-foot carpa, roughly 2,500 pairs of glaucous-winged gulls nested, the largest colony of this species we found in the Shumigans. During that night's exploration, we heard eerie calls from underground burrows, leading us to an ancient murlet nest, the only nocturnal species confirmed on carpa. Tufted and horned puffins nested near camp but only at certain times would the adults come to exchange nesting duties. Our rocky thumbnail beach was not a place to be camped during a storm, so on July 6th, a miserable, drizzly, foggy day, we left on the 6 p.m. high tide, despite distant white caps and a rising sea surge foretelling an approaching storm. Ed drove the boat through five to six foot swells, white caps, rain, and strong winds to Andronica. We managed to land in the surging sea on Andronica's beach as waves broke over the transom, leaving us to hold the boat in position while one unloaded the gear. What a relief to be in a safe and comfortable campsite where the fox farmers had built their cabin in the early 1900s. After a tent day wading out drizzle and heavy surf, calm seas and no rain allowed a 6 p.m. trip to survey the haystacks. All around the haystacks, black-legged kittiwakes, 3,900 pairs, and murres, 4,950 pairs, with 80% thick build, were stacked up on rock ledges or rafted up on the water. At 9 p.m. in difficult surge, we landed on one of the larger haystack islands. Anchoring the boat offshore, we each went different directions to probe burrows in wet, slippery grass or rock talus. After a puffin bit me, I only checked small burrows and rock crevices, eventually pulling out a fork-tailed storm petrel. Dead leeches, storm petrels, and ancient murlets were also found. At 10.30 p.m., our boat was hung up on the rocks and the surf was again pounding. After a perfectly timed launch into the waves, we spent until 2 a.m. floating around the haystacks listening to nocturnal seabirds calling. Bioluminescent swirling sparkles lit up each paddle stroke and the outboard churned up a brilliant lighted path. Storm petrels, ancient murlets, and a third species, 
began a strange, unforgettable chorus during our last two hours floating around the haystacks. We arrived back at Sand Point on July 8th to resupply and left the next day for Near Island, a 42-mile, five-hour run. On arrival, we rode a big surge onto a boulder beach and scrambled ashore over snotty seaweed rocks, struggling to keep the boat from turning and being flipped. The boat settled high and dry on the rocks. From 11 p.m. to 3.30 a.m., we searched dense vegetation, crawling over rock piles in the dark and reaching in burrows until dawn. Ghoulish leeches, storm petrel calls, and cricket-like ancient murlet calls filled the upper basin with a nocturnal symphony. We found mazes of squirrel burrows and one large burrow from which a puffin-sized bird flushed, probably a rhinoceros auklet. A front was coming with the incoming tide. We had to get off this boulder beach, but the boat was not budging fully loaded where it was, with a two-foot lower tide bringing only foam under the boat. Repeatedly, Ed scrambled over snotty rocks, threw gear in the boat, and kicked the boat off the rocks while I paddled past breakers, repeating this dance until we were off the worst beach we have ever been on. Luckily, the sun was out the whole time, and just around the corner was a perfectly safe Near Island Beach. On July 13th, after waiting out the storm, we broke camp and headed for Turner Island, where we camped. We climbed Turner Island's highest peak and explored the fox farmer's cabin, but found no Arctic foxes, which were released in 1898. On Bendel Island, we discovered parakeet auklets, horned puffins, and pigeon guillemots. And in one valley, mugulls and glaucous wing gulls nested, the only mugul colony in the Shumigans found at the time in 1977. On July 17, we moved camp to a sand beach on Big Kanuji, and then hiked to the Crested Auklet colony in Yukon Harbor. Crested Auklet flocks powered over down slope over our heads, swooshing past to the sea with a roar. Graceful aerial displays above and over the water formed synchronized flock choreography as the sun was dropping to the ridge. In a 1978 publication, Ed wrote that nearly all of the Shumigans estimated 43,000 crested auklets nested in colluvium on the southern end of Big Kanuji Island, with the biggest colony of 15,000 located in the Boulder Slope in Yukon Harbor. Red foxes and ground squirrels frequently hunt in the colony. Ed also wrote that the crested auklets had been more abundant based on the population descriptions from 1959 surveys. With the sun sinking to the distant ridge, we raced back to camp, completing a difficult, grueling hike, partly in the dark. The next day, we visited Flying Eagle Harbor by hiking over a 100-foot-high, one-half-mile pass. Fox tracks were everywhere on the beach at the head of this snug harbor. At 6.30 p.m., we boated to the spit on Peninsula Island for the night where the calls of ancient murlets and fork-tailed storm petrels lulled us to sleep. July 19th, we left Peninsula Island, bucked rough seas to Nagai Island with a howling northwest wind and six to 10-foot swells, scary in our small 16-foot inflatable boat. From land at Cape Wedge, Ed saw foaming white water and 40-knot winds were too dangerous to proceed. At Pirate Shake, several hours of hard labor clearing debris off the cobblestones and laying logs on the grassy stretch created a clear portage route. We grunted the 270-pound boat, 160-pound motor, and all of our gear to the other side of Nagai Island. On July 20th, we made the squirrely crossing from Nagai Island to Popoff Island and ended this 23-mile segment with an easy cruise in the island's lee to Sand Point. A reconnaissance of the seabird colonies on Bird and Chernabura Islands, the outermost Shumigans, was conducted in 1970 by Robert Jones, Jr. 
and Edgar Bailey. In June of that year, Bob Jones and Ed visited Bird and Chernabira Islands using a 20-foot dory before inflatables became the preferred boat for island surveys. They spent a week on the islands observing marine birds and mammals. Ed's Schumigan monograph, Breeding, Seabird Distribution and Abundance in the Schumigan Islands, published in the Murlet in 1978, states, quote, Excluding nocturnal nesting species, roughly a million seabirds nest in the Schumigans, unquote. The five nocturnal seabird species are ancient murlets, Cassin's oclets, fork-tailed storm petrels, leeches storm petrels, and rhinoceros oclets. He also reported that all five nocturnal seabirds occurring in Alaska nest in the Schumigans. Ancient murlets are probably the most common nocturnal species, nesting on seven Schumigan Islands. Ed also reported the overall total population of the five nocturnal species in the Schumigans is probably at least 250,000 pairs. Located at the north end of Big Kanuji Island, 128-acre Castle Rock is a small fortress of an island with sheer cliffs all around its circumference. Crested and leased oclets and the largest colony of parakeet oclets in the Schumigans were found on Castle Rock, estimated at 7,000 pairs. This island also has the most extensive aggregation of nocturnal nesters in the Schumigans. Richly diverse, with no foxes and difficult cliffs to thwart predators, Castle Rock also has the greatest seabird populations in the Schumigans. Simeonoff Island in the Schumigans was first designated as a sea otter refuge in 1958. In addition to an archaeological site of an Aleut village, its human history includes fox farming beginning in 1890 with the introduction of Arctic foxes and the start of cattle ranching in 1896. Today, Simeonoff is wilderness with no human habitation remaining. With rich and diverse seabird and marine mammal populations that include all five nocturnal nesting seabirds, the Schumigan Islands are a remote wilderness of islands now protected as part of the Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge headquartered in Homer, Alaska, thanks to the 1980 Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act.